In our last episode, I showed you how I started installing the new water system and that I placed the water boiler right on top of the bilge pump so that I couldn't access it anymore without removing the boiler. Well, obviously this didn't feel right, so the first thing I did was to remove the tank again and place the support timbers further back so that the access to the pump is unobstructed. And there you go, much better. Now we have easy access to the bilge pump and though the boiler is almost touching the floor, in the end it worked out. Next I cut some plywood plates to attach further devices. The plate I'm making here is going to be used for the shower sump. Next I cut two more plates to attach two pumps, one for the grey water system and one for what I call the river water system, which I will show you in detail a little later in this video. Once again I'm sealing up the edges of the boards with boat lacquer. Let's do a little test to see if everything fits. And indeed, it seems to fit pretty well. First I'm gonna attach the Whale Gulper 320, which we're gonna use to empty out our grey water tank. Here comes the shower sump, also from Whale. Now those two devices are placed in a way that I can easily access them. Next I want to introduce the Whale Quick Connect system, which is one of the main reasons why I chose Whale for our water system. The system is based around these 15mm semi-rigid water tubes, which you can connect and disconnect to various adapters without the need of any tools. They provide a whole array of different connectors and adapters so that it can easily be added to or replace an existing water system. Now before we continue, for the purpose of full disclosure, I have to say that I am being sponsored by Whale, but initially I reached out to them, not the other way around, and I chose them because during my research for the perfect water system for our purpose, they seem to check the most boxes. And that's what I'm gonna show you as we go along with this water system build. Alright, now moving on. First, I'm going to attach this half inch female to quick connect adapter to our river water inlet tap. I use the thread adapter between the tap and the whale adapter. To see if everything is watertight so far, I'm going to attach this brass plug. Let's open the tap. And indeed, it's watertight. Next, I'm going to prepare the Whale Watermaster, which we're gonna use to pump the river water into the system. I'm going to attach this water filter to the pump's inlet valve. Next I'm going to attach this plywood plate which I cut earlier and attach the water pump to it. I make sure that the pump is at the same height as the tap. And then we are ready to connect the pump to the tap. The 15mm semi-rigid tubes come in 10 meter length. A special cutting device is required to cut the tubes and make sure the cut is straight. Inside the quick connect adapters there are four little wedges which will grab onto the pipe once it's put inside. 
Once again, connecting and disconnecting the tubes can be done without the use of any tools. When you hear the clicking, you know that the tube is well in place. I'm going to use these two 90 degree adapters to connect the pump and the tap. Another tube for the distance between the tap and the pump. And then we can put this in place. I'm installing this three-way valve to split the water line coming out of the pump, one going to the toilet flush, the other to the on-deck windless rinsing holes. So let's install that. The windless rinsing hose will be installed later, so for now I'm going to put another plug in here. With this adapter I can connect a regular flexible hose to the system. Let's put that one to the other outlet of the three-way valve. And then the valve is ready to be installed. Now the river water to the toilet flush line is complete and I had to improvise a little to attach the flexible hose to the toilet flush, so I'm not going to show that here. Later on I added a support under the three-way valve, just to let you know I'm still improving it. I'm using this little switch just to test the system for now. So let's open up the river water tap and start the pump. Whoops, it seems there was some dirt left in the river water tap. But anyway, the toilet flush works now and there are no leaks whatsoever. Alright, now that we have our various pumps and devices in place, it's time to open up the floorboards and run the cables from the DC distribution to the bilge of the galley. And this would have been a very gruesome task if I wasn't able to remove the floorboards here in the helm, since otherwise I would have had to crawl around in the engine room to run all these cables. But luckily that's not the case, so here we go. At first, I'm just gonna attach the cables in a makeshift way, because I want to wait until all the cables have been laid, before bundling them up and attaching them properly. Now the wires for all the devices running on DC power have been laid, so let's tidy up the cables a little, and then we're gonna leave this for now. For our next topic, we have to go back in time. In fact, a little over two months back from the date of this video, right when I first put in this plywood plate behind the steering wheel, where I planned to make the base of our main DC distribution. First, I'm gonna mount this terminal block with 32 terminals. And to the right of that, a bus bar with 20 terminals, which I'm gonna use as a positive distribution point coming from the battery. Next, I'm going to install this Philippi negative bus bar with a 300 amp shunt in close proximity to the battery. Here, we have our Philippi main battery switch, which is composed out of three modules, a 250 amp fuse, five unswitched terminals, and a remote controlled battery switch itself with its P-Bus connection cable. 
Then it's time to make the wires to connect these components to our 24 volt battery bank. It's important that the cables have the same length and as usual I'm using shrink tube to properly seal the cables from the elements. So let's put those cables in place. Then I'm making a set of smaller cables to connect the components from the engine room to the ones we put in place earlier behind the steering wheel. Depending on the kind of terminal I'm trying to connect to, I'm using these so-called wire ferrules to establish a strong and safe connection. I'm using these special crimping clamps, which squeeze the wire ferrule from all sides at the same time. For every new cable I'm laying, I have to determine the right length between the two connections, which is quite challenging in some areas, given that there is almost never a straight line between two connections, so it's quite easy to make mistakes when eventually cutting the wire, as it might be either too long or too short. I have to make these smaller gauged wires to feed a positive line into the terminal block for each load. At some point I realized that I mounted the terminal block in the wrong way, so let's quickly turn it around. Sometimes our abode is the location for a bird convention where they like to come together, hanging out, exchanging the latest bird news. And I find it curious to see how they all like to stay at the exact same distance from each other. Anyway, I find this fascinating and thought it was worth sharing with you. But for now, let's get back to work. This is Filippi's navigation light control module. It can be connected to the switch panel where you can turn on and off the lights and it will also indicate you if a given light is out of order. Let's mount it to the plywood plate. First I'm gonna wire up this terminal strip which is connected to the indication LEDs on the switch panel. Let's have a good look at the wiring diagram and then get started. You see, wiring is composed of many different steps and takes up large amounts of time if done properly. And while it's not necessarily the most exciting thing to watch, I wanted to show this one a little more in detail. Since the lights don't draw so much current, and since we're running on 24 volts, I can daisy chain the positive wires for each light here on the upper side of the board. Here to the left, I'm just connecting the indication lights negative that come from the switch panel.
Once the switch panel is wired up properly, I will bind the cables together to keep everything nice and tidy. And then I go to the outside of the boat to finally wire up that anchor light properly. I got a new socket. Here I'm feeding the cable through the mast. Then I put all the cables at the right position, wire everything up, close up the anchor light housing, And then we can do a first test. And it works. Now let's have a look at the switch panel, where at this specific moment in time I had only wired up the top light, all the other lights not being connected yet, the control LEDs are flashing to indicate that there is a problem with the lights. Finally we are ready to wire up the cables, which are coming directly from the navigation lights. For this I have to strip the cable's mantle at a specific length. Next I'm crimping the wire ferrules. I bundle the wires together and screw them to the plywood plate. And then I can finish up with the wiring. And so here is the finished result. And with this my friends, I'm signing out. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.